Howdy. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. Likewise. Very good to see you. Nice background. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> is it edited in Zoom or is it your wallpaper? No, this is actually a cloth. Okay. Uh, you know, I have my own guitar academy now, so this is basically my studio, teaching studio. Clever. Yeah. Uh, I had a, a virtual background for a while with a green screen, you know, but it was so much work to make that look real perfect. So at some point I just ordered this cloth. Yeah, Love I know. I, the good thing of Zoom, you can choose really good backgrounds. Oh, that's nice. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not bad. <laughs> Raw for president. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> nice. Let's make it a bar. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Love it. Nah, let's so, let's choose the no normal one. Good to see you, man. Likewise, likewise. Good to see you. Well, first of all, uh, congratulations on your uh, new album. Oh, thank you. And new is, yeah. of course, not as new uh, the music, but you took the very, very heavy task on you to take up some songs from uh, Jimi Hendrix. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, what did you think? If I'm starting with the heavy, the, the most difficult one, I can always do the easier one later on. Yeah. Why Jimmy? Why Jimmy Ulrich? Why Jimmy? Well, it kind of fell into place, you know, in kind of almost unpredictable ways. It actually, it started before the pandemic, yeah. Uh, I was thinking of doing a Jimi Hendrix masterclass to kind of share some of the guitar things that, you know, really dear to me. And when I started preparing that, I realized how much of what I do is rooted in into kind of Jimmy's aesthetic. And so, you know, I was like maybe playing three or four Hendrix songs in, in my life set over the years. So, you know, it was just kind of born out of that twilight zone. It was kind of like, you know, maybe now is a good time to, to to do a Jimi Hendrix tribute album. If I ever do a tribute album, it's going to be a Jimi Hendrix tribute album. Eh? Uh, but the idea was not to fall into that trap of the typical, let's show the world that I can sound like Jimi kind of, you know, wah pedal and fuzz pedal kind of template but instead I, I felt like there were so many songs that were kind of underappreciated the more soulful material that jimmy released you know this this more shy side of him that was probably more his main character and not the you know the guy that sets his guitar on fire if, if you know him a little more intimately <laughs> there wasn't really him so i was kind of interested to look at those songs that to me sounded almost a little unfinished in a way where you know the form often he would just do a verse a chorus verse and chorus and then go into this big jam kind of yeah? so especially the endings of a lot of songs they weren't really fleshed out they were just sometimes even faded <laughs> so i felt there was some potential to really explore those songs and and kind of you know both kind of put my own fingerprint on it but also kind of uh, see, you know, what those songs would sound like in today's sonic expectation, or you can put it like that. And then the whole COVID thing happened. You know, I was sitting in lockdown beginning of, of 2020, and I didn't even have a, a Marshall stack to, to finish my overdubs. We literally recorded the, the main takes in one studio day like you know 85 percent of the album was recorded in one day and so i didn't have my gear with me and that kind of gave me an idea to just ask some of my friends and colleagues to kind of finish it together i would have never done this if it was in the normal circumstances you know this kind of guitar player pride thing you were, you were forced into <laughs> i kind of let myself you know i kind of it opened my eyes a little bit and the fortunate thing was also that all these other cats were sitting at home with really nothing to do. 
So, you know, I was able to, to get David Grissom on board. He was one of the first ones. And then Tommy Shannon, you know, he, we've had a relationship for like over 10 years. So that, that was really like just magnific magnificent to get him involved. And then Matt Schofield and then ultimately Greg Koch and Chris singer Chris Farlow. So, you know, it was just amazing how it all came together in this COVID time. And now it's kind of almost like a joint effort tribute album. I think oh, yeah. um, I listen to today a couple of songs and I, um, if I'm in a hurry, I do the all songs that I'm, I have to listen in a hurry. I'll, I listen to start 20 seconds, go halfway. And then in the end was always a solo, especially with Jimmy. And mm. I still could hear your sound in it. I still oh, I'm glad hear to hear that. Yeah, no, but it is. It is, it is a a niche between a little bit symphonic and the work Jimmy did, mm. and that's Ulrich Ellison for you in this case. Awesome. I mean, if, if I, yeah, if I accomplished that, you know, that was kind of my goal to to not just make it a a, a Jimmy a one -on -one. worship. Yeah, a one on one, but kind of you know find my own identity in that song material, kind of. Yeah. Isn't that what Jimmy said? Jimmy said, "I'm being covered a lot of times. Even my mistakes are covered." Yeah, he did say that. Yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah, <laughs> but I yeah. think you have a you have a nice bunch with you. We know um, Greg Koch did a uh, uh, session at Blues Moves, and the intellect of him, music wise, you can you can put him upside down, backwards. He's always know what he is doing, and he's such a good hearing and, and playing, and he's. He had a lot of humor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he has a perfect it. humor. Yeah. And if you listen to his solo on Little Wing, you know, it's uh, he's not even trying to sound like Jimmy. Uh, he's just, yeah, he's just being Greg. <laughs> okay. I am. Um... Yeah, you have me send the, the, the CD liner with the written because I didn't know what the crack was on it, for instance. That's important to oh. know. Because... No, no right. nevertheless. Uh, another question for you and for our listeners. Uh, we know you were uh, at our uh, place a couple of years ago and then it was still the tribe. Then uh, COVID came and a lot of personal stuff changed in your life. And you said, I'm going to not take the punches but i'm gonna see what i can do so you started the music academy and helping yes. other musicians still in this uh, awful period where they can't perform on stage helping with uh, excelling what they do or getting better in what they are supposed to do as a guitar player or as a musician exactly th yeah how's that um, came up to you well i think like for many of us musicians, you know, this whole COVID challenge kind of put us on a crossroad uh, with all the tours being canceled and then, you know, being rescheduled over and over again. And each time you do that, you, you lose money and faith. Uh, yeah. So either put your head in the sand and just kind of, you know, start drinking whiskey <laughs> or on the other hand, uh, say okay this is the situation now everyone is stuck at home uh, what other ways do I have available to share my talent my gift with the world and so maybe for the first time ever it was a, a more you know unselfish um, in a way uh, more serving kind of perspective like okay you know I, I can offer, you know, I do what I do, but if I'm just sitting here at home, no one is really gonna hear me. And you know, those all those live streams on Facebook, you get tired after about yeah. two, three months, it really get tired. And so I was just like, okay, you know what? Maybe this is just the right time for me to uh, completely rethink my role or, you know, what I can do. And let me see if I can really help other people they play guitar that not even professionally that are just on the beginning of this path towards being able to express yourself on the instrument uh what can i do to you know put them in a new on a new level and 
so it was exactly a year ago actually that i started you know like january 1st was <laughs> the official beginning of uh, total guitar transformation and i've learned so much in this last year uh, watching my students and and you know kind of kind of reliving my own development in a way of how you kind of discover all those things and kind of gain the confidence you know it's like oh you know this is something it's something i can do actually yeah and you know i mean students we're talking guys you know from 16 to like i think my oldest student is like turning 70 this year and just kind of see the joy and excitement that that those mainly guys you know we have a few girls but to see the joy excitement that they have when they play guitar i mean it's inspiring for me as well are you a, a fierce tutor like if you give them homework you really hope that they do it and they practice as they should i guess most musicians become good because what do you say you have become, how do i come in the new york that uh, that hall how come in the radio studio how oh how you I... that joke with the i, I know yeah. what you mean uh practice how, how practice get, practice in yeah how do you get yeah uh we, which hall is uh not royal all the hall. uh the yeah, royal, I know music, exactly what you... royal music city hall or something like that yeah 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 <laughs> no i mean i think you're right it's... There's a lot. Of, well, I think I'm not a musician. I'm 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 I'm, an, I'm busy in another field. But if you really master an instrument, you should practice, 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 practice. And somebody pointing the, giving you the point is what to watch for. It is always good. Hmm. So are you? Uh, if you were have an appointment with a student and they so next week you should play that and they don't <laughs> master it very well. Are you an angry one or you're uh, still <laughs> Well, you know, in short, I like to work with both the dangling carrot and a little bit of the whip <laughs> combination. <laughs> but in all in all seriousness, you know, the mo the, the biggest problem that most guys have learning guitar is not the knowledge part, but it's the implementing part. It's very easy to get all the knowledge today, even with YouTube and, you know, online courses and everything. But to implement, really sit down and implement that into your playing, it's really difficult. Yeah? Especially if you don't have feedback. Yeah. If you don't have someone to say, hey, look, you're doing 80% of this right. But notice, you know, this little aspect here, this is where you're kind of losing the magic. And so that, that's what I offer to my students, basically, is constant refinement. And we work a lot with video. So imagine you posting a video of your playing and then, you know, a certain task, that, a homework that I gave you. And then I'll just refine it for you. And then you refine it in the next video and j until we just get it right, basically. Yeah? And most students are super willing. I mean, they have to, you know, Pay, pay a quite yeah. uh, respectable tuition to join my academy. But that's actually really good because that makes people commit. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I don't really have to work that hard to, you know, make them do their homework. But I just kind of help them to implement all the things that they maybe even already know, you know, for the first time they can really implement into their playing. Is this something you uh, still continue to do, even when there um, is back? We are back to normal, as we say. There are a lot of live music back going on, and I think for a lot of bands, they learn the most if they play in front of an audience, where they mm. make mistakes and they learn from it. And yes. uh, this seems to me something beautiful in this period, where you have a lot of time, where you normally choose to be on an. an, an in a bar and play your, your heart out, that you can uh, still um, be on the on the edge of, of your your craft. But it must be a time that you can show off and uh, form a band if you don't have one and show what you can do. Yeah. And hopefully yeah. write your own songs. 
Well, my vision is, you know, that's the other thing. I'm not just a teacher, I'm an artist. So hopefully I can inspire many of my students to yeah. just express themselves. And the ultimate goal for me is, you know, once this COVID thing hopefully is under control better again, that I'll just be able to combine my touring with giving workshops and clinics for the community Ooh. that I've built and, you know, have people come in, maybe even sit in on a song or so, you know, and then do, do a special workshop too, where, you know, maybe I'll tutor them to play in a band. And, and uh, also, you know, in uh, two weeks, we're doing the first uh, interactive um, live workshop. It's like a blues workshop where I'm bringing in Matt Schofield as a guest teacher. And so there's also all these opportunities to collaborate uh, both online and in reality. I think, you know, once, once I manage to really build that community bigger, I think there's, there's just so many things you can do with this, you know, hundreds of passionate guitar players all over the world, basically, that we could have a lot of fun together in the future. Oh, I think that's absolutely good. I, I know more people do it. And for instance, um, that Bent Lansky, the South African guitar player. Yeah. He's uh, visiting us in April. And I know he was eight years ago on our show. He did it also in South Africa. Every year, uh, three weeks with a bunch of people somewhere in an, in South Africa, he sat together and teach them everything they wanted F to know. Fantastic. Yeah, I didn't know he did that. Yeah, he that's did that. That's great. Yeah. So I think that's for more people who are very crafted and, uh, and, and you seem to me like a good tutor. You, you, you have the patience and the knowledge. <laughs> that's yeah. yeah. That's I mean, it's, you know, the cool thing is, I know both the academic side of it and the street level, you know, Texas dive bar kind of level. And so between those two, yeah. you know, I can both explain something very theoretical and you know some of my students are retired engineers and so so to them you know it's 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 easier to give them a real logical structure to explain so i can serve them and then i can talk to the 16 year old kid that just wants to shred you know <laughs> and i think that's a good combination to have a teacher that is both a player performer yeah. and kind of more educated you know so yeah I'm, I'm happy to to do whatever i can <laughs> Well, my experience is especially U.S. acts are so thankful and, you know, even to just be able to play. And even if they're bigger acts sometimes, uh, like I think Europeans are generally a little more complicated. More than American ones, yeah. Yeah, more than Americans, yeah. Yeah, yeah that could be. Yeah. That could be. Also, if I compare it to, you know, my time in Vienna and then versus in Austin, I really learned how, how, how easygoing everything can be, you know, if, if everyone just wants to have a good time, mainly. Yeah? I, uh, James Harmon. Okay. N I never heard the name. No, James Harmon, a harmonica player. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> He was a. He played with us with a Belgian band, and three days later he was uh, expected to do the tour with ZZ Top as a harmonica player. So wow! It's not, it's not a. It's not a rookie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But James is a real, one of a kind guy. If you Google him, you will see, and he has always great stories. He passed away last year. Oh. And he did a sound check, and he was really onto me. He said, "Now you." Now the drums, now the bass, now that one, now me, dang it. Everything good? No, not everything is not good, but it is not getting better. So we have to deal with it, guys. This is what we're going to do. We do it. <laughs> done. <laughs> Ten minutes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Ten minutes all done. And he sat down after the show with us. And two o'clock in the night, we were still listening to him. We're not talking. We're just listening to him. He had a greater story about everything he 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 experienced on the on, on the road you know that wow. cars breaking down that could be a teacher for you 
as a guest <laughs> teacher. Yeah, unfortunately, he's not around anymore. Yeah. He's not around, but that, that, yeah. those guys gonna they, they yeah. can learn you something. Yeah. So was he from Texas, or how did Billy know know him? Uh, it's, Billy it's, Gibbons. No, James Harmon is um, what he played with. I have to look it up. He played 50 years or so. No, because, you know, most of the times, like guys like CC Top, they will use someone they've known for 20 years or so. That's why I'm wondering if he's from Texas or. Uh, you, original Alabama, I see here, but. OK. Well, close but enough, yeah. He started with Gene Taylor in the Blasters. Fabulous Thunderbirds. There you go. That's the connection. Yeah. yeah. And Kit Ramos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. OK. Yeah, I There's think the Fabulous Thunderbirds will be the hookup from the ZZ Top, yeah, of course. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. And he played on the on a couple of ZZ Top's albums, like Mescalero and La Futura. Yeah, right on. Maybe Bill Ham even connected them, you know? Is that important? No, I'm just curious, you know? No, but, like, sometimes I heard, we have Bill Ham as a producer or, uh, or a couple of them. How, how important is a good producer for you, reckon? Hmm. You know, I think in the in the case of Bill Ham, who was a recording artist, you know, before he became a producer or even manager, I think it was a little bit different. Where you know you have a guy that really steers things musically, and I think he had a big, a, a big. Uh, part of of their like more commercial success with the eliminator kind of you know for hardcore fans kind of disappointing drum computers and all that i mean he played a really big role i think in in creating that vision and so i would say you know it can be really important uh there's it gotta be a synergy in a way you know between the artist and the producer and the manager it can go south also you know <laughs> there's, no, <laughs> there's no guarantee it's gonna work but i mean i loved like this hendrix album you know the power of soul i had a uh, austrian producer helmut bieber he helped me he used to be falco's guitar player in okay. the 80s and i mean he's like in terms of rock playing uh, he's like the undisputed tone king in Austria. Okay. Um, I mean, when I was like, uh, you know, in my early 20s when I met him and he became like an, an icon at, at that time, point in time. And so, you know, to have him even just help me with old vintage marshals and pedals and stuff and just his knowledge, uh, to have someone from the outside looking in is just... Uh, invaluable i think the, i mean what's going to happen now next yeah you released your cd it's a little difficult to promote and we're gonna take a few tracks of course awesome uh, no problem at all we like jimmy yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well you know uh i do have a tour planned for this this year this spring okay so finger fingers crossed that I will be able to do it. Will be like uh, from April twentieth to May twentieth, kind of that time frame. I think that's the best month to do something in there until October, and then we're probably gonna be shivering for the COVID again. Yeah, I think so too. But the the, uh, tr the trouble is, a lot of people are rescheduling a lot of stuff, and the period where in all this kind of happening has been smaller and smaller. Yeah. So more people fishing in the same pond isn't a good idea no no i mean the cool thing is that you know the the, the clubs and promoters that you build a relationship over the years uh they're really flexible in changing dates and it becomes even almost more intimate in a way you know because we're all in the same boat kind of so that has been a, a nice experience uh but yeah, I mean, I, I just want to play and, you know, make people happy again, hopefully with with some smoking guitar playing and uh, and also share my album because, you know, 
life is still the best way to to share the album and it's going to come out on vinyl as well so that that should be finished beginning of april so yeah i really hope it works out well it's good to see that there are still people and i know there are because i'm and that's the people i love to to deal with or still positive even oh, yeah. if uh, if life hands you lemon, make lemonade out of it. Or uh, was that proverb going in, in in American? I don't know exactly, but uh, Ulrich Ellison once, or well, I mean, I'm quite opinionated. So it, you you want to really hear my opinion? Yeah, no problem. Of course, <laughs> I'm, I I have a few um, friends who are really not into it, and a few are saying uh, I'm I'm loving it. You know. So I would say. Fuck Spotify, <laughs> okay. you know. Fuck Daniel Ek. I mean, he's the he's the biggest. Sorry, dick who around? I think is that the, the owner? Found, is that the owner? Of that's Spotify? the owner. Yeah, I mean, he made billions of dollars on the back of musicians, and not only the big ones, but the millions of guys like me as well. You know, but you know that that's the one part of it. So really, fuck Spotify. You know, I, I got I, I'm not using that word the word a lot, but in that case. I'm pretty passionate about it, but <laughs> no I am all about quality of relationships because, you know, uh, the whole social media at the end of the day is, is, is about building relationships. And so it's not about how many, in my experience, it's more about how, you know, the quality of those relationships. Can you build relationships that, you know, to people that will actually show up at your gigs or they will actually join my guitar academy uh, how much value can I give them to you know how deeply can I make friends with them where they feel like oh Ulrich oh he's coming I gotta see him and you can use social media for that you don't have to have millions of followers I don't have definitely don't have millions of followers but you know if you learn how to focus more on the quality instead of the look how important i am look what kind of influence i am oh influence i think I there's a that. big yeah that word yeah right oh, so man. that the qual if you focus on the quality then i think you can you know build a tribe to come back to my word <laughs> uh of, of followers that that um you really have like a, a meaningful full relationship with them yeah, that's okay because I'm. I think it's good in those days that we can reach out all over the world. I will see where the listeners of Blues Moves are. It's the, the most is mm. in the states, but then it's England, France, things. But it's also even China and Russia and yeah. cities. I never thought they were listening. But Twitter, I think, is a cesspool of opinions and and just giving not the right information we need for something. You know, Facebook, the same. It can be a good thing, but it can be also an ugly is, thing. Yeah, like you know, Spotify. It's just it doesn't build re help build relationships. But for example, YouTube, you know, can build relationships a little more easily. Uh, and then Facebook, you can you can make a group where people, you know, specifically yeah. interested in your stuff can follow you. So there are tools out there that you can use to kind of attract. The kind of people that are more likely to in the play. outro uh, i'd like to play a little yeah since i have my guitar yeah. here come on man yeah just play a little blues moose blues maybe yeah oh perfect <laughs> Thank you very much. Great. You're welcome.